Okay guys, this is George here. So I'm gonna make some shade cloth or a shade kind of an A-frame for my plants because it's like 115, 120 degrees and they're getting cooked. So uh, I found some materials around my yard so it's cost me just about nothing. But I think if you would have to put this together, um, this is about what it would cost if you had to go out and buy all the materials. So let's go ahead and check it out. So here I have some extra wood, which is just about trashed. And they're two by fours and they're eight feet long, okay? And so I picked that eight feet long because what can happen is you see, this is going to be um, like an A-frame and the whole thing will end up being probably, you know, six or seven feet or so tall. So I got the two by fours and then I also have some like one by twos and or one by threes and I cut them to about four feet. So this whole thing, so this whole thing is going to be, um, the sticks are gonna be about eight feet and they're gonna be four feet apart from each other and they're gonna be like legs, kind of like an A-frame leg. So here, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so these are the materials that I'm using here. These are about, um, those are like half inch or like th three eighths of an inch by um, three inches long. These are called lag bolts. And I've got a big flat washer and then I've got a small washer. I've got two of those because those are the hinges at the top. I've got a big drill bit, which is just bigger than the, um, the lag bolt here. And that is to kind of make with the hinge. This is a pilot for that. And then this is a smaller screw for when I put the drywall screws in for the, the one by threes. I'm gonna drill the smaller hole first. And I've measured right up about four inches or so. Now this smaller hole going to be for the screw so this is tight because we want that to we, we need this something to bite into so that's what this is for so now we're going to measure the same four inches right there we're going to take the larger drill bit this time so this one's going to go like this to get it my coffee so now this is going to be kind of like the loose hinge again you got this lag bolt with a small washer and then a big washer okay so now this is going to go through like that okay then this other side here is going to have a big washer like that and then the other piece of board is going to go right up against that so let's go ahead and check that out Okay, you can kind of see here how um, this washer, and there's a little bit, I've got to tighten this up a little bit more. So you will need the ratchet, tighten it up. The, the bolt might come through a little bit at the bottom. Um, so you can maybe get some shorter ones, but I'd rather have a little longer than shorter. And then basically this is snugged up like that, and then it makes a hinge. So now this will make a hinge this and you'll see how that works next So this is where I'm attaching the cross brace to the uh, two legs. And over on the right side of the screen is where the hinge is at. And I'm going about four inches from the bottom, four inches from the top. I'm just kind of guesstimating it. Now I'm only putting in one hole in each corner. 
and then I'm going crossways like this to um, get it square because if it's if it's equal going crossways then you know it's square and so now I've got this cross brace which I'm going to put in on an angle and that is going to help me uh, to keep this to keep it square keep it parallel because that's also something that you want to do that's really important otherwise it's just gonna kind of come apart and you'll see this later this is kind of the um, not quite finished we don't have the cloth on that yet we'll put that on a little bit later I've got to go buy it still but you can tell that um, this is just some old wood it was all um, kind of uh, reclaimed, if that's what you want to call it. And uh, it's all warped. It's all dried out. It's full of bird stuff. And um, instead of throwing it out, I found some to repurpose it. So whatever you got laying around or whatever you decide to buy, it could be smaller, it could be bigger, it could be wider. And you'll see the dimensions that I chose um, a little bit later because I planned this out for the shade cloth because shade cloth is normally six feet wide and it comes in a roll of a length if you get it from a nursery and so this is four feet and that way I've got a foot on each side to be able to roll around so this is what this is going to look like this is what it looks like so here I'm standing up the uh, a-frame and I'm about five six you can see it's a little taller than that and uh, you know hey Maybe this is going to be tough for you to handle because it's kind of big and, um, you know, uh, it's about seven inch, seven feet, just over seven feet tall from the inside as where it stands. And so this kind of is, fits my purpose. So all I'm going to be doing this is I took this and I put it flat on the ground like that and I'm going to unscrew a little bit of it so I can get the uh, material in. Now this is four feet wide. Okay, it's four feet wide and the material is six feet. So I'm gonna have a foot on each side. I'm gonna be able to kind of wrap it around and um, so it doesn't fray. I've got my staple gun ready to go. I've got my screw gun and uh, let's just get at it. So this is where I'm laying out the cloth and it would be easier with two people, but I did it by myself. The wood has got sharp corners on it and the shade cloth has got holes. So it's tricky trying to pull it and to get it stretched when I'm by myself but I did the best I could now here at the bottom um, I'm going to unscrew the wood and take it over to the workbench so you can actually see a little bit more in detail on how I uh, fold it over the edge so it doesn't fray so it doesn't come apart so here is where I took that bottom piece I brought it over and I'm folding the shade cloth, now this is the cut edge of the shade cloth, so it can fray. And I'm folding that underneath um, on the inside, and I kind of took a guesstimate of where the center is. I've got plenty of, um, uh, you know, plenty of cloth on both sides, but I just continued to walk down the edge and fold it over like you see and put some staples in it. And I go all the way to the right, and then I'm going to go from there and then go back to the uh, left side of it and finish it off and then from there now i've got the bottom and it's relatively straight good enough for me <clears throat> all right so i still have the holes and i know where they went in Like that. Okay, now I've got all four holes. And as you can see, this material is in the inside, okay? But it's on the outside here. So I'm gonna top this up. That the green stuff is 
between this one by three and the two by four. So it was folded underneath previously and we put some uh, underneath here, we put in the staples. Now we have this, now the cross brace, which I have right here, I'm going to do a um, similar thing, okay? I'm going to take the cross brace. Actually, I'm gonna leave the cross brace in there. This will be easier for you guys. <clears throat> All right, and then I'm going to stand it back up right now and see what happens. I'm just going from a little bit from side to side, putting in a few staples and making it a little bit taut and pulling on the edges because, uh, you know, we want it to kind of look nice. Okay, so this here, I'm not taking the screws all the way out, but I'm leaving them in like that. So now, Let's drill aside. And I'm gonna push the drill, the screw in, just a little bit, a little bit more just like that, on one of them on this side, and then one on the other side, like that. So that way I can find the hole, because I can see where the holes are at holes right here is one two this one here is going to be the one that's farthest right here so i am going to bring it taut just like that okay Got to keep this taut, pull on it a little bit. Like that. Okay. This is my Fuerte Avocado, and um, if you look up in the link, up on there, there's a link on what this thing looked like before. So, um, yeah, some of these leaves are kind of toast.
Okay, so again, this thing is about seven feet tall or so, and maybe I need one that's a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe you don't, my avocado is six feet tall. And I had it, you saw before, I had it swung over the top here, but then it was kind of laying on top of these things. And not much, but I just don't think I want it right up against the, um, I don't want it right up against like that. So this is how I got it. I just went and I folded the top part um, back over. I can trim that if I want. So this is a 50% shade cloth. And so let's just say that's a hundred at the top, but I doubt it because you can still see through it. And it's gonna have pretty good protection. So that's that. Now, um, let's do something about this little guy here, right? Because he's starting to see some sun right about now. There you go. We'll come take a visit again. We'll see what this is like um, later in the later in the uh, afternoon when the sun's coming up through there. That's where the sun's going to come up from, right up in through there. And this thing gets so it's baked. about seven o'clock in the evening, and you can see the shade cloth over here uh, did pretty good. But now there's one more thing that we're going to do is we're going to use some Ivy Organics, which is going to help out with the sunburn as a sunscreen and some other um, and kind of paint up some of the stems so the stun doesn't get sunstroke. So check this out. So this is the Ivy Organics. It's the uh, color green. There's a few different colors and it protects against damage, uh, sunburn, insects, and rodents. And uh, this little can here, it's about a pint or so. And what I do is I mix that. There's a powder and there's some other um, oils in there and you mix it together with some water and so I put it in here this is kind of like a thicker paste and um, this is easy for me to mix in there and then what I did is I also made some foliar spray now um, Ivy Organic sells a really nice spray and the most important thing that I have found is that it needs to be a high output because we want to spray the leaves and I have to shake this up because there's oils in it but we want to um, we want to make sure that we get the leaves and put a good coating on it so let's go ahead and do that all right so this is one of my small avocados here that's about two feet tall if you can see it got toasted because it's been 118 120 degrees um, but you can see here as I'm spraying it and I'm putting um, I'm coating it well and because there's oils in here, you want to be a little bit careful on the time of day that you do this because the sun's going down at seven o'clock in the evening and if the sun hits the oil, it's going to cook it. It's like putting baby oil on your skin and that's just not gonna be good. So here, just giving this stuff here a good coating, just like that see how nice and wet these are you can also see a little bit right here if you can see the um, right here where that was the ivy organics and then it grew okay and that's the paint and we're gonna go ahead and do that next okay so now we're going to get to the um, actual using this stuff here in the form of a paste and we're gonna use a paintbrush now, with this Ivy Organics, you can dilute it and make different strengths. So there's a really light strength that is for the uh, foliar spray for painting. And then there's a little thicker, which is what I've got right now. And I'm just gonna dimp the brush in there a little bit like that. So this here is a little bit thicker. And as I paint this on, you'll see just like that, um, it goes on quite, it goes on heavier. If I can get this right in there and then see, there we go, just like that. And some of this here. And then that's gonna help protect this because it's thicker and it's like for the trunk. 
So this is gonna work out really well there. Okay, one last shot here. Um, I'm done with the IV Organics kind of doing the sunscreen and all that. And I wanna show you what it looks like after it's dried Hi. on the leaves. Uh, and so what it's gonna look like, there's gonna be a film on it. And here's what the film looks like. So as you can see the spots here, um, that's the sunscreen, which is dried on it, which that's good news. That's, that's exactly what you want. And I went back through here and I touched up um, where I needed to, this is facing due sun west like that. The sun's right through there, yep. So this gets hit, this, this citrus gets hit a lot. So I hope you guys have found this video kind of interesting and cool, uh, building a sunshade and applying some IV organics to help out with the sunscreen. So um, until next time, all right, ciao and happy gardening.